Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to look at five killer tips that everyone should know in Excel VBA. Now, these tips are very useful and I use them all the time myself. Now, if you like this video, please click on the like button. So let's get started with the very first tip. So the first tip we're going to look at is a very simple one, but it's very useful. And I think it's a tip that most people don't know about. So imagine we want to search for the word collection. We click on collection and we do control F and that appears in the dialogue. And then we can set whatever settings we want. So for example, we can set it to current project and then we click on find next. And we keep clicking on find next as it cycles through all the different instance of the word collection until it reaches the end. And then we get this message. Now, what we can actually do is if we click on collection, we can press control F3 and it will automatically search for the word collection. And after that, we can just hit F3 and it will keep cycling through and keep finding the next one. And this is all based on our current selection. So in other words, whatever the settings are in the find dialogue, these are the ones that control F3 follows. So if we change this, to current procedure. And then let's just do a control F3 again. You can see that it never leaves the right data function because it's going on the settings in the find dialog. So this is the first tip. It's a very simple one, but it's one that I use all the time. So tip number two involves copying modules. So copying modules is quite easy, but there's simple ways to do that most people don't know about. Now imagine we have a module called error handling and we want to copy this somewhere else or we want to back it up. So we can easily do this by right clicking and selecting export file. And then when we select export file, we just simply select where we want to do it. Now I have it in the code repository here. And we, we simply click on save and then we have our own version of error handling. Now, if we want to add error handling to a new project, so let's imagine we have a new workbook. What we can simply do is right click and select import file and then select error handling. And you can see when we go down to the modules, you can see that it now has error handling. So let's look at another way of importing the file. So let's remove error handling like this. We remove it. We say we don't want to back it up and then we go to the folder. So we open Windows Explorer and we find where the file is and we can easily add this to our book one by simply dragging the file into book one. And you can see we double click. We now have the error handler module in book one. So that's a really handy way of doing it. Now let's remove it and let me show you the final method to do it. So imagine we have the two workbooks open and error handling module is in one and we want to create a copy in the other one. So we don't have to actually export the file. What we can do is just drag it from here and drop it into book one. And now we have a copy of error handling in book one. So this is a very easy way of copying modules between different workbooks. Either we have the modules open and we just copy between or we can just export the file and import the file. Now exporting the file is very useful if you want to keep a backup of it and if we want to keep different versions. So that's tip two, how to copy modules. So one thing that confused me a lot when I started with Excel VBA was how to figure out the events. So VBA has worksheet events and workbook events, like when something changes on a worksheet. So I couldn't find an easy way to see a list of the available events. And then when I wanted to create an event, I had to like Google and find the event somewhere and copy that syntax. But then one day I found a very easy way to create events. And the way we do it is we select the sheet that we want the worksheet event for. So we double click on it. And then on the left at the top where it says general, we select worksheet. Now when we select worksheet, it automatically puts in a selection change event. Now if there's no event here, basically VBA can't keep it open. So this is kind of a strange quirk of VBA that I, I don't know what the reason for it is. So we can create our own event and we just select it from the window here. And let's say we want to do a change event. And we select change and you can see that it appears. Now we can get rid of this one because there's at least one event here. 
And you can see we now have our worksheet change event. So let's test it out. We'll just have a message box. And what worksheet change does is when a cell changes, this event kicks off. So we can just say uh, target, let's do target, which is the cells that change and the address. So when we change the value in a cell, this will give us a message box with the address of that cell. Let's do Alt F11 and let's do two. And we hit enter and you can see that it displays B2. So now let's do C2. And you can see that it says C2 is the one that changed. Now let's delete what's in both of these. And you can see that it selects B2 and C2. So you can see it's a very simple way that we can select the events on any of the worksheets. And you can see all the ones that are there. So all the ones that are available are in this list. So it makes it very, very easy. And as I said, when you select one, it basically just creates the event for you. Now the same thing happens for the workbook. If you want a workbook event, we basically double click in this workbook and we select workbook. Now again, it automatically generates an event. So again, we can look in the right hand side drop down and you can see all the different things available. You can see like workbook open, window activate, window deactivate, all different things, sheet activate, sheet before delete and so on. And you can select any of these to use with the workbook. So let's try one. Let's try the activate because it's quite a simple one to use. And when the workbook is activated, what we will do is we'll do a message box and the message box will basically say activated. And what we'll do is we'll put down the name of the workbook, which is this workbook and name. So let's create a second workbook. So we just open a new one and then let's go back to the previous workbook. And you can see that it said activated book one because we activated this workbook. So you can see this is a very simple way of finding all the different events that are available and adding the events to your workbook or to your sheet. And as I said, this wasn't obvious to me when I started with Excel VBA and took me a while to find out. So that is tip number three. So this tip is more advanced as it has to do with error handling. And this is one very useful thing. And you'll see it if you look in my error handling selection of videos. Now, I really liked this little tip. So that's why I've took it out and I'm going to show it in this video. Imagine you have your code and it has error handling and somebody has reported an error. So you run the code and it basically tells you, OK, there's an error somewhere in read data. Now, if you had line numbers, I might even be more accurate. But what you want to do is stop where the error is because the error could be in a loop. So even if you have the line number, it mightn't stop the first time. It could be like the 10th time or something. So what you want to do is kind of go to when the error occurs. So how you can do this is by basically just turning off the error handling code. And this is very simple to do. You just go to tools, you go to options and you go to general. And the default of error trapping is break on unhandled errors. But we want to break on all errors, which basically is saying ignore error handling. So we click OK, we run the code and you can see it found the error. We select debug and it stops exactly where the error happens. Now you can see for this error, it's happening where I is three. So it's happening on the third loop. But it could happen if we had a lot of data it could be like on the 1000 on a 10,000. It could be way down. So this is very useful to get you straight to the error. But it's very important that once you finish and you have the error solved, that you turn the error handling back on. Tip five is again a bit advanced, but I think it's very, very useful in certain situations and is definitely worth knowing. So imagine you give a user a big application and within that application, you've got lots of kind of business logic and you have lots of message boxes saying to the user what you've selected, giving them certain information. Now, when you run the code in test mode, you want to add more stuff to it. Then you don't want to have to spend your time turning off these message boxes. In other words, you don't want to keep having to click OK, OK. So what we can do is we can turn them off like this. We can say if and we say, say, for example, debugging equals zero. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. Then so if there's no debugging, what we want to do is just show 
the message box. And again, let's put a second one here. So anytime the code runs at the moment, it just runs as normal. It just displays the message boxes, just, just like this as normal. But if we get the code and then we say, let's do some debugging, and I don't want all these message boxes popping up, what we can do is do tools, and we do the project properties. So in the conditional compilation arguments, what we add is debugging, and we say debugging equals one. So debugging, if debugging doesn't exist, it equals zero. When we run the code now, the code just steps over this and finishes. It doesn't do any of the message box stuff. But if we had something outside, for example, if we had a message box outside, let's just say we have a, a message box here and we run it again, you can see that it will run that message box. So this is very useful when you're testing the code and you want to take some of the stuff out that isn't necessary while debugging. Now, one thing you might notice here, putting if debugging equals zero everywhere in your code is quite annoying. So what we can do instead is create a sub like this. And what this sub basically does is it's exactly the same as message box. It's just passing on the parameters. But the only difference is that what it does is it has this line once inside. So what we can do instead of this is we can do my message box and we can get rid of all these other instances of this so that we only have it in one place. And then if we run the code again, you can see it goes in and this should be if debugging equals naught. And so we run the code, we step in and you see it doesn't, it doesn't go to the message box because debugging is set on. If we want to turn debugging off, we can just simply go to the properties and then we either delete debugging from here or we set it to zero. So if it's not here, then it's the same as it's set to zero. So we run this code again, and you can see that it turns up. So as I said, this one's a little advanced, but it can be very, very useful in situations where you're dealing with code and you're trying to develop the code already does a lot of stuff and you kind of want to skip that stuff when you're testing it or when you're developing. So those are the five killer Excel VBA tips. I hope you enjoyed them and I hope you'll find them useful. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please click on the like button. And if you want to hear about more of my upcoming videos, then please click on the subscribe button. In the description below the video, I give away a free VBA Vitals cheat sheet. So make sure to get your hands on that. Now, if you have any questions, comments or queries, please add them below the video. See you next time.